Good afternoon. Uh, this is in continuation with our discussion uh, on the genre of short story. So, uh, our today's story is a meeting at last by Hanif Qureshi, the noted British Pakistan born, uh, uh, Pakistani but British born and a British citizen, uh, short story writer, novelist. Uh, dramatist as well as a screenplay writer, Hanif Qureshi. So, uh, this is story, a meeting, full stop, at last. Look at the way the, uh, the title is constructed, a meeting, full stop, at, uh, at last. Uh, you, you know, at last, maybe it, it was a meeting uh, long overdue, long awaited, and it happens finally. So, a touch of uh, finality about it, a touch of uh, uh, that uh, it, it unavoidability about it. So, it was a meeting that had to happen and at last it did take place. We will also see how this particular uh, short story matches the paradigms of uh, all features of a short story that we were discussing this morning. <coughs> the, uh, um, the, the, there are only two characters in this play and uh, uh, sorry in this short story, whereas the other the third character is referred to, who is also a very uh, important character, but uh, that uh, character is just uh, mentioned okay, in uh, in absentia. Hanif Qureshi, uh, a noted screenwriter and a playwright, he is. Uh, uh, better known for the screenplay of uh, My Beautiful Laundrette, a play which explored the uh, racial tensions between South Asians and uh, the British in, uh, in the Sadhal part of uh, London. And then um, also his novel, The, Sub the Buddha of Suburbia, okay, which is another uh, take on uh, exploration of popular culture and how uh, he refers and alludes to all uh, tropes of popular culture uh, while uh, describing his uh, relationship with the members of his family. Other uh, noted works by Hanif Qureshi are uh, Gabriel's Gift, uh, a novel, and My Ear to His Heart, it is uh, uh, an autobiography. So, we will begin. Morgan's lover's husband held out his hand. So, uh, it's the sto you know, they, they come, the writer comes straight to the point, there is no building up, there is no tension, there is no uh, exposition or rising action, he comes to the point. We know there is, a, we, at the onset we know there is uh, a person called Morgan, he has, he has a lover, holds out his hand, sorry. Hello at last, he said. I enjoyed watching you standing across the road. I was delighted when after some consideration, you made up your mind to speak with me. Will you sit down? Morgan, Eric. Morgan nodded, dropped his car keys on the table and sat down on the edge of a chair. He is very edgy, edge of a chair. He, he, he does not want to make himself comfortable, obviously. He is facing his lover's husband. So, um, Naturally, he cannot be uh, completely at ease. The two men looked at one another. So, look at the uh, very dramatic uh, kind of a narration. Okay. Hanif Qureshi, uh, a screenwriter, also a noted playwright, he, the way he writes uh, a story, it is almost like a play happening, you know, uh, also like a stage setting in a hotel. Um, Eric said, Are you drinking? In a while, maybe. Eric called for another bottle. They were all there were already two on the table. That he, so that uh, it means he has been drinking. You don't mind if I do. Feel free. I do now. Eric finished his bottle and replaced it on the table uh, with his uh, fingers round the neck. Morgan saw Eric's thin gold wedding ring. Caroline would always drop hers in a dish on the table in Morgan's hall and replace it when she left. Caroline is the lover. Okay. She would take off the wedding ring uh, whenever she visited Morgan's house and would wear it again 
before leaving. Eric had said on the phone, is that Morgan? So, now he is just giving us a quick background of this meeting. Yes, Morgan replied, who? The voice went on, are you Caroline's boyfriend? But who is this asking? Who are you? The man she lives with, Eric, her husband. Okay, Right, I see. Good, you see. Eric had said, please on the phone, please meet me, please. Why? Morgan had said, why should I? There are some things I need to know. Eric named a coffee and the time. It was later that day. He would be there. He could wait. Morgan rang Caroline. She was in meetings, as Eric must have known. Morgan deliberated all day, but it was not until the last moment, pacing up and down his front, do front room, where he was already late, that he walked out of the house, got in his car, and he stood across the road from the cafe. Although Caroline had described Eric's parents, his inarticulate furies, the way his head hung when he was, uh, he felt low, and even as Morgan laughed, the way he scratched his backside. Eric had been a shadow man, an unfocused dark figure that had lain across their life since they had met. And while Morgan knew things about him that he did not need to know, he had little idea of what Eric knew of him. He had yet to find out what Caroline might have recently told him. The last few days had been the craziest of Morgan's life. The waiter, the waitress brought Eric a beer. Morgan was about to order one for himself, but changed his mind and asked for water. Eric smiled grimly. So, how are you? Morgan knew that Eric worked long hours. He came home late and got up after the children had gone to school. Looking at him, Morgan tried to visualize something Caroline had said. As she prepared for work in the morning, he lay in bed with, in his pajamas for an hour, saying nothing but thinking intently with his hands over his eyes, as if he were in pain and had to work something out. So, the picture that uh, uh, Caroline has portrayed of her husband is, uh, he was uh, uh, an uncommunicative, uh, you know, a, a husband, uh, a disconnected husband, who was not really there in spite of being physically present, but he was not uh, very attentive to her. Caroline left for work as early as she could in order to phone Morgan from the office. After a couple of months, Morgan requested her not to speak about Eric, but as Morgan's meetings with Caroline were arranged around Eric's absences, he was inevitably mentioned. Morgan said, what can I do for you? There are things I want to know. I am entitled. Are you? Do not I have any rights? Morgan knew that this man was not going to be easy. In the car, he had tried to prepare, but it was like revising for an exam without having been told the subject. All right, Morgan said to calm him down. I understand you. After all, you have taken my life. Sorry, I mean my wife. My wife. Eric swigged, swigged at his bottle. Then he took out a small pot of pills and shook it. It was empty. He said, I am having to take these. He was upset, no doubt. He would be in shock. Morgan was Caroline too, of course. Morgan was aware that she had started with him to cheer herself up. She had two children and a good, if dull, job. Then her best friend took a lover. Caroline met Morgan through work and decided immediately that he had the right credentials. Love and romance suited her. Why had not she been? Uh, dipped in such delight every day. She thought everything else could remain the same apart from her treat. But as Morgan liked to say, there were consequences. Now, uh, uh, Caroline is leading, uh, we are told something about Caroline, who is leading, um, you know, uh, on surface, a good, respectable uh, uh, life. She has a she has a job, she has a family, she has two children, but uh, she is bored. Okay, like most modern people, she is bored of uh, this uh, uh, supposedly mundane life, and she wants um, something to, uh, you know, spice up things. Now she knows that uh, her best friend has taken a lover, and uh, so does she. For some, uh, Morgan has the right credentials. It's 
also said uh, with a touch of irony. You see, um, to fall in love, you do not need to see the right credentials, but here Morgan has been appraised by Caroline and she feels, okay, he is the right person to have an affair with and it has uh, uh, cheered her spirits while uh, the affair is going on. But Morgan always had warned her that there would be consequences, you cannot uh, uh, get away with it so easily. I am not moving out of my house, Eric said, it is my home, you are not intending to take that away from me as well as my wife. Your wife, Caroline, Morgan said, restoring her as her own person, I did not steal her, I did not have to persuade her, she gave herself to me. She gave herself, she wanted you, that is the truth. Eric stared, waiting for him to continue, but Morgan said nothing, reminding himself that he could walk out at any time, that he did not have to take anything from this man. Eric said, do you want her? I think so, yes. You are not sure? After doing all this, you are not sure? I did not say that. What do you mean then? Nothing. But perhaps he was not sure. Now, we see Morgan's point of view. Finally, he has been forced to uh, examine his relationship with Caroline and uh, when Eric asks him point blank whether he wants uh, to take Caroline away, uh, he is not very sure. This, uh, this is a story which explores male emotions very well, you know, it, it gives both sides, uh, perspectives of the, from the both sides the husbands as well as the lovers. We do not have Caroline, but we get glimpses of what Caroline goes through as well. Perhaps he was not sure, he had become used to their arrangement, which was uh, quite convenient to all, you see. Uh, there were too many hurried phone calls, misunderstood letters, snatched meetings and painful partings, but they had lived within it. So, they had managed to survive all the, uh, you know, this, uh, yeah, this craziness of romance. They even had a routine, he had received more from Eric's wife, seeing her twice a week than he had from any other woman. Otherwise, when he was not working, he visited art galleries with his daughter. He packed his shoulder bag, took his guide book and walked about parts of the city he had never seen. He sat by the river and wrote notes about the past, what had he learned through her, a reverence for the world the ability to see feeling, certain created objects and other people as important, indeed invaluable. She had introduced him to the pleasures of carelessness. Uh, his affair with Caroline has been quite reckless and perhaps that has given him a spirit of adventure which was uh, till now missing in his life. Um, Caroline has been good to him, Caroline's influence or Caroline's presence in his life has been good for Morgan. We are told uh, something about Morgan as well, he is a divorcee, he has a daughter, uh, but uh, after Caroline's entry in his life, he has started exploring things which he had not paid attention to earlier. He now looks at objects, the creative side of, the, of life, he visits art galleries, he has developed an artistic streak, something which was missing in his life earlier. Eric said, I met Caroline when she was 21, she did not have a line on her face, her cheeks were rosy, she was acting in a play at university. Was she a good actress? She is good at a lot of things, is not she? Uh, Eric said, I, it was not long before we developed bad habits. What sort of things? In our relationship, that is the word everyone uses, Eric said, we did not have the skill, the talent, the ability to get out of them. How long have you known her? Two years. Two years? Morgan was confused. What did she tell you? Have not you been discussing it? Eric said, how long do you think will it take me to digest all this? Morgan said, what are you doing? He had been watching Eric's hands, wondering whether uh, he would grasp the neck, uh, neck of the bottle, but Eric was hunting through the briefcase he had pulled out from under the table. What date? Surely you remember that. Do not you two have anniversaries uh, when you first met? Um, Eric dragged out a large red book, my journal. Perhaps I made a note that day. The past two years have to be rethought. 
then you are deceived every day has another complexion eric wants to know he wants to get to the bottom of things what triggered off this affair he wants to know the exact date when it started and uh, since he is in a habit of keeping a journal he wants uh, to consult his journal what exactly did he do or he didn't do on that day when uh, caroline started his affair with uh, morgan morgan looked round at other people in the cafe eric flipped through the pages of the book when he saw morgan watching he shut the journal have you ever been deceived has that ever happened to you i would imagine so said morgan how pompous and do you think that deceiving someone is all right one might say that there are circumstances which make it inevitable eric said it falsifies everything your demeanor suggests that it doesn't matter are you that cynical this is important look at the century uh, aren't we all cynical we have all turned into uh, uh, we are totally indifferent towards other people's miseries sorry i work in television news i know what goes on your cruelty is the same thing think of the jews that other people don't have feelings that they don't matter that you can trample over them i haven't killed you eric i could die of this i could die he remembered one night when she had to go get home to slip into bed with eric caroline had said if only eric would die just die peacefully quite peacefully eric leaned across the table have you felt rough then yes over this over this over everything but definitely over this good middle age is a lonely time without a doubt said morgan that's interesting more lonely than any other time do you think yes said morgan all you lack seems irrevocable eric said between the age of 12 and 13 my elder brother whom i adored committed suicide my father died of grief and my grandfather just died do you think i still miss them how could you not eric drank his beer and thought about this you're right there is a hole in me he says i wish there were a hole in you morgan said she has listened to me and me to her eric said you really pay attention to one another do you there's something about being attended to that makes you feel better i'm never lonely when i am with her you can be lonely even with even when you are with someone but with uh, in this relationship they complete each other that's what morgan is trying to uh, tell eric i have been determined this time not to shut myself off but she is my wife what is it people say these days uh, it's your problem it's my problem do you believe that what do you think morgan had been drinking a lot of whiskey uh, um, he had been at university in the late 60s but had identified with the puritanical left not the hippies these days when he needed to switch off his brain he noticed how tenacious consciousness was perhaps he wanted to shut off his mind because in the past few days he had been considering forgetting caroline forgetting them uh, forget forgetting about them all caroline eric and their kids maybe it's getting too much for him to handle maybe he would know now perhaps the secrecy and her inaccessibility had kept them all uh, at the right distance morgan realized he had been thinking for some time he turned to eric again who was tapping the bottle with his nail i do like your house said eric but it's big for one person my house did you say have you seen it yes Mo- morgan looked at eric's eyes he seemed rather spirited morgan almost envied him hatred could give you great energy haven't you got anything better to do than stand outside my house haven't you got anything better to do than steal my wife eric pointed his finger at him there are worse things than um, standing outside people's house uh, you know you have stolen my wife so why can't i come uh, and observe you just out of curiosity one day morgan perhaps you will wake up and find in the morning that things aren't the way they were last night that everything you have 
has been sullied and corrupted in some way. Can you imagine that? All right, uh, said Morgan. Eric had knocked his bottle over. He put his napkin on the spilled beer and popped his bottle on top of that. So, look at the way the conversation uh, is taking place between just two men. That is what we were talking about limited characters, limited number of characters and their characters uh, are not even fully developed. A short story writer does not have that luxury to develop his characters completely or fully, but what he has to make uh, do with whatever limitations, whatever constraints he has. So, look at the milieu also as uh, you know a, a, a restaurant, a cafe where uh, you know the, the, uh, two men can have a peaceful conversation. Um, a short story cannot afford to jump between uh, um, various different settings, um, although there may be exceptions, but by and large. So, Hanif Qureshi sticks to this rule of uh, um, focusing on, uh, on, a, on a single plot, that is the relationship of these two men. You know, you have it is a love triangle. You have a woman and two men as the focus of attention and then uh, you have uh, this is the story this is a this this triangle the situation has to be um, resolved and setting is this cafe and just two characters limit, limited number of characters he said are you intending to take my children away what why should i I can tell you now, I have had that house altered to my specifications, you know. I have a pagola, I am not moving out I'm, and I am not selling it. Actually, to tell the truth, Eric had a sort of half grin, half grimace on his face. I might be better off without my wife and kids. What? What did you say? Eric raised his eyebrows at him. You know what I mean, he said. Morgan's children were with their mother, the girl away at university the boy at private school, both of them were doing well. Morgan had met Eric's kids only briefly. He had offered to take them in if Caroline was prepared to be with him. He was ready for that, he thought. He did not want to shirk the large tasks, but in time one of the kids could say become a junkie, the other a teenage prostitute and Morgan having fallen for their mother might find himself burdened. He knew people it had happened to. He himself had done well in life, he had a divorce, but uh, however, uh, his children had done well, uh, uh, the boy at private school and the girl at the university. So, uh, things were working fine for him, but what if Caroline does move in with him with along with her kids and what if things go wrong with the kids, he would end up being burdened with that at, and he had never ever thought about that. At this moment, sitting face to face with Eric across the table, he is forced to think about all these uh, possibilities and it is not a very attractive idea. He also says that he has been drinking a lot of late, which he had never done before. So, has Caroline been all that good to him? Okay. Hanish Qureshi is trying to raise these issues. Okay. He, he may not give you all the comfortable answers and solutions, but there are complications in any relationship, even in a relationship which looks quite comfortable and very um, you know sorted out, but still uh, it may not work out that as well. My children are going to be pretty angry with you when they find out what you have done to us. Yes, Morgan said, who could bl blame them? They are big and expensive, they eat like horses, Christ. Eric said, do you know about my job? Not as much as you know about mine, I should not think. Eric did not respond, but said, funny to think of uh, you two talking about me. I bet you would lie there wishing I had, I would have a car crash. Morgan blinked. It is prestigious. In the newsroom, you know, well paid, plenty of action, continuous turnover of stories, but it is bland, worthless. I can see that now and the people burn out. They are exhausted and on an adrenaline rush at the same time. I have always wanted to take up walking, hill walking you know, boots and run sex, uh, sorry ruck sex. Uh, I want to write a novel and travel and have adventures. This could be an opportunity. So, even in their uh, tragedy, they are looking for 
possibilities. Even in th their situation, which is far from happy, they are looking, well, they are considering, well, well, it could not be all that bad. There are, there are go some, thing, th some good things also that can come out of it. Maybe he can uh, afford to um, give up his job for a while and take up something which he had already wanted to do, travel, go uh, you know for mount, for a hike, uh, read books, write something, uh, some things which he had already always wanted to know, do, but did not have the time for. So, perhaps this could be the perfect um, opportunity to pursue uh, whatever he had always wanted to do. Morgan wondered at this. Caroline had said that Eric took little interest in the outside world except through the medium of journalism. The way things looked, smelled, tasted held no fascination for him, nor did the inner motives of living people. Whereas Morgan and Caroline, uh, dawdling in a bar with their hands playing on one another, loved to discuss the relationships of mutual acquaintances, as if together they might distill the spirit of a working love. Morgan picked up his car keys. He said, sounds good, you will be fine then Eric, best of luck. Thanks a bunch. Eric showed no sign of moving. He said, what do you like about her? Morgan wanted to shout at him. He wanted to pound on the table in front of him saying, uh, I love her, as if I have lifted the dish of life up to my face and burst through it into the wonderland of love forever. Eric was dancing up. What is it? What? you like about her. If you do not know, maybe you would be uh, good enough to leave us alone. Uh, so, you see uh, uh, the story, it started with a climax, the two men meeting each other in a restaurant, one um, already knowing that uh, they have a common interest, Caroline between them. And uh, now, uh, we look at the uh, falling action, there, uh, there is a deep rift between the two men is tension in the air and it is the play, the sorry, the story is coming uh, of, uh, you know, or reaching it is denouement. Look Eric, Morgan said, if you calm yourself a minute, I will say this, more than a year ago, uh, she said she wanted to be with me, I have been waiting for her. He pointed at Eric, you have had your time with her, you have had plenty. I would say you have had enough. Now it is my turn. He got up and walked to the door. It was simple. Then it felt good to be outside. He did not look back. Morgan said in, sat in the car and sighed. He started off and stopped at the lights on the corner. He was thinking he would go to the supermarket. Caroline could come round after work and he would cook. He would mix her favorite drink, a whiskey mac. She would appreciate being looked after. Eric pulled o open the door, got in and shut the door. Morgan stared at him. The driver behind him beeped his horn repeatedly. Morgan drove across the road. Do you want me to drop you somewhere? I have not finished with you, said Eric. Morgan looked al alternately at the road and at Eric. Eric was sitting in his car, in his seat, with his feet on his rubber mat. Morgan was swearing under his breath. Eric said, what are you going to do? Have you decided? Morgan drove on. He saw that Eric had picked up a piece of paper from the dashboard. Morgan remembered it was a shopping list that Caroline had made out for him. Eric put it back. Morgan turned the car round and accelerated. We will go to her office now and discuss it with her. Is that what you want? I am sure she will tell you everything you want to know. Otherwise, let me know when you want to get out, said Morgan. Say when. Eric just uh, stared ahead. Morgan thought he had been afraid of happiness and kept it away. He had been afraid of other people and had kept them away. He was still afraid, but it was too late for that. So, this is Morgan's story. He has been afraid all his life of things known and unknown. He has kept himself hidden from other people. Uh, he had just uh, you know, uh, created a wall around him. He did not want people, uh, he did not, he avoided con confront, uh, confrontations, he avoided showdowns, but now uh, he could not, he knew that he cannot run away from uh, situations anymore and this is the time. Now, 
it is high time that he learns to take a, to take a stand. Suddenly, he banged the steering wheel and said, OK, what, said Eric. I have decided, said Morgan, the answer is yes, yes to everything, yeah, that I do love her and I do want to be with her. Now, you must get out. He stopped the car, out, I said. Driving away, he watched Eric in the mirror, getting smaller and smaller. With one uh, swift decision of his, he has made Eric small. Yeah, he has reduced Eric's importance, Eric who was standing looming large over their relationship for such a long time, he had to resort to lying, cheating and um, uh, evading situations, evading, uh, deferring from taking any uh, action or swift or uh, decisions. But now, with one, uh, you know, but with this making up of his mind, it is now clear that he is going to be with Caroline, the woman who makes him he happy indeed. And with that, the story ends. And uh, I would like to draw your attention to the, uh, to again the same uh, features of a short story. In this story, we find that it lacks magnitude. Yeah, it says important things. It says serious things about relationships, about uh, male emotions. However, it is not a very long story, it is a, sh a typical short, short story. There is a plot, there is a, uh, there is a problem, there is some kind of a solution as well. Although, there are uh, uh, typically it is not rich in details, uh, it has a unique and single effect on the readers, of course, because it is not, uh, uh, it does not digress or divert in any form. Uh, limited number of characters, yes, and uh, uh, a single singularity of a setting, yes, it is one uh, one single set, and that's all. Setting, that's all the that matters here. A sparseness of situation and setting, yes, and then story begins from with a climax and ends in a quick resolution, a denouement. So you will see how well this particular story fits into the uh, parameters of a short story. However, I would like to uh, move on to another short story. This is uh, called Associations and Blue and you will feel how different uh, these two stories are in terms of plot, character and setting. Uh, so, Associations in Blue by Krista Wolf. Who was it? Shouted with joy when blue was born. So, she opens with a, a quotation by Pablo Neruda. I will repeat, who was it shouted with joy when blue was born? The color, the reference is to the color blue and as the title of the story says, associations in blue. Uh, and now, you find uh, that Pablo Neruda raises a question what happened when the color blue was born and uh, uh, Krista Wolf gives a very uh, feminist repost to Neruda. Okay. She says, you ask odd questions Pablo, blue born, but did not it always exist as the sky blue over the landscape of childhood, as the most everlasting blue there is, outside is the loveliest blue sky and here you are inside huddling over your book. Uh, this is a reference to uh, uh, Goethe's uh, theory of color, blue of the sky reveals to us basic color, uh, law of color. So, blue of the sky, it has always been there. So, what is so, uh, so unusual about the color blue? She asks, you are going to turn into a blue stocking after all, then you would not get a husband later on. This is uh, satire, uh, if you, uh, uh, you know, intellectualize everything, then you are going to turn into a blue stocking. Blue stocking is an intellectual kind of a woman and uh, when a, whenever a woman is supposed to be extremely intelligent, the idea is she would not find a husband and she, uh, she is in a way uh, uh, ridiculing people like Pablo Neruda, if you think too much you would not find a husband. Blue Road Stories. 
uh, Anne Murray's boyfriend said he wants to bring her down the blue from out of the sky. You see, they, who is this Anne Murray? You don't know. Okay, so uh, see how this particular story um, or piece defies the logic of a short story. You don't have a plot here. You don't have characters here. The references to just anyone, you know, uh, Anne Mary is not a major character here. She is any woman. So, Anne Mary's boyfriend said he wants to bring her down the blue from out of the sky. You know, uh, most lovers do that. They promise the impossible. So, he, her boyfriend promised her to uh, bring down the blue from out of the sky. I am going to bring you the blue down from heaven. Lordy, that is just the sort of thing guys like him say, talking a blue streak. And now, look at the various associations of blue. So, uh, the entire story is a, uh, a word play on the color blue. Uh, but she claims he is true to her, a likely story. She is blonde, so she should wear blue, um, her boyfriend says. So, it is like a reinforcing the stereotype, blonde girl, a blue dress looks good on her. So, blue, blue, all my clothes are blue. Blue is the color of faithfulness, generally believed to be. But lately, she has red shoes. He actually gave them to her. Red and blue are finery to the soul. And for the wife of the clown, they make a fine gown. Okay. So, uh, this fellow happens is just like a clown. He may not be a professional clown. But the way he talks, uh, he is, uh, you know, uh, a joker, and he has given her red shoes, and along with her blue dress, she uh, makes a fine wife for a clown like him. Her boyfriend likes to paint the town blue now and then. So it's a spin on painting the town red. Maybe he is not very faithful to her. He paints the town blue, not red. Blue today, blue tomorrow, and blue again the day after that. Blue Monday, you know, you have heard of having Monday bl blues, when uh, after the weekend, uh, people do not want to work, get out of their beds. So, um, uh, Monday morning blues. See what I mean? Blue idol on Monday, hungry on Tuesday, that is a proverb. We all know that saying. But right now, unfortunately, he is outside, staggering across the square, singing, cornflower blue is the sky beside the mighty Rhine. Totally blue the man is that is dead drunk. He is past help from a blue cross nurse. Cornflower blue are women's eyes by the mighty wine. Boys are they ever. Boy are they ever. Recently he beat her black and blue, see. And then her brother said, now that guy is in for a big blue surprise and gave him a good beating. Once again he got off lightly with a black and blue eye. That's fine. But now, let us hope Anne Mary will stop pulling blue wool over her eyes about him. Even she can't be that blue eyed. From the blue mountains, we are coming, my dear. Oh, my darling, you are so far from here. We used to sing it, you know, it is like a, a rhyme, a childhood rhyme, she remembers. The teachers as dumb as we are fear. The sky is blue, the weather is fine. Dear teacher, we want to, we want to go out for a walk. I suppose you kids want a blue ink report to your parents. That is how the teacher would retort. Instead, why do not you memorize the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet? Or are you just interested in hearing somewhere, something about the war again, when the blue bottles were flying around our guy's ears? Blue bottles is like wasps, the insects flying around uh, the, the, you know, the uh, soldier's ears. Forward march, a song, the blue coated dragoons are riding with trumpets and drums through the gates. So, another association for the color blue, blue is also the color of uh, the military. Can't you all sing something nice for once? The beautiful blue Danube that was the first waltz I danced with Hans. Yep, it is the same old story. Things ended badly with her blue jacket sailor. Great can't get over it. A blue jacket led. He sails the sea. He loved a girl, but he had not a penny. The maidens disgraced. And who is to blame? The amorous sailor with no penny to his name. That sort of tale can end badly. 
Madame X had just had to be carted off by the police with their blue light flashing. So, uh, policemen also have the blue light flashing on their car, atop their car. So, uh, Madame X is a woman of dubious reputation. Blue cyanide is my guess. Her lips already looked quite blue. In a case like that, help always arrives too late, whenever someone takes blue cyanide. The blue, blue can be a color of love, of, of patriotism, of honor. Um, of innocence, uh, childhood nursery rhymes, it could also be the color of cyanide. The sleek dude who left her in the lurch supposedly has blue blood, at least that is what he told her, blue blood is royalty. So, uh, some girl who has been dumped uh, by a person uh, uh, who, uh, who supposedly had uh, blue blood. We all know about King Blue Beard, it is a reference to a folk tale by uh, Charles Perrault. The strained knight had a beard that was all blue, and she had a dread of it and felt uneasy every time she looked at him. If only people had paid attention to her feelings, but he gave her a blue arctic fox as a gift, which is a rare breed, and she thought a man like that cannot lie and went weak at the knees. So, how women get fooled by you know by people, there was that good for nothing person who would paint the town red or blue, and then there was this person who pretended to be royalty or was indeed royalty, but still uh, treated the girl the same way. So, there is not much of a difference. This is going to cost you a pretty blue penny or two, you will have to earn them first, I will do it even so. We always use blue ink to sign the clean copy, but first draw me up a blue print please. After all with a scheme like this, you do not want to just take off into the wild blue yonder, but some people aim at the wild blue yonder and hit the black bull's eye. You see, you cannot just take a risk. So, uh, wild blue yonder is like taking a risk and in spite of taking risks, some people may succeed, whereas others might fail. So, uh, it is just talking in, uh, you know, in big metaphors, having fun uh, with words here, with language, associative power of blues, okay, but it is we, uh, if we want to look at the features of a short story, there, there, is, there are no characters here, there is no plot here, it is just fragments, okay, some very cl clever fragments uh, woven together. Okay. Uh, an extremely good example of intertextuality as we were talking uh, when we were doing John Guer, you know, making allusions and references to various texts, to nursery rhymes, to um, highbrow culture, to music. Um, uh, to uh, to folk tales, and uh, uh, all this while doing a word play on blue. We used to fill up the milk can with blueberries uh, in two hours, and by the afternoon the cake was baked. Carb poche blue at New Year's never. Carb should be served in a beer sauce, and poached trout is a dish for posh people. Blue simply isn't a color for stuff to eat, so you don't eat blue color dishes. Better suited to flowers, violets for instance, a violet in the meadow stood, bent over and unknown, it was a lovely violet. Blue cabbage, that is bluish red cabbage down south, well that is ok with me. And there is blue liquor and there is blue master cheese with blue mould in it, not something I like. I will never understand how people can grow blue potatoes and name them blue mice. Goethe's theory of color, so now we have reference to Goethe's. This color creates a peculiar and almost inexpressible effect on the eye. As a color, it, repre it represents an energy. Blue Pablo is the color of longing. Is that what you meant? Spring lets its blue ribbon flutter through the air again. The blue hills in the blue distance on horizons of two blue, blue flags to Berlin, Prussian blue, Berlin blue, an important blue pigment made of ferrous sulphate and potassium ferrocyanide, a delicate stroke on China. So, you know, it suggests so many things, it suggests so many different shades of color. So, blue uh, too has uh, a variety of shades, there is no specific blue, blue has range of shades in it. Okay. You do not just have 
a blue, a, a blanket term blue, you, a, a color which suits all occasions and all purposes. Blue suggests different things at different time to different people, that is blue. You have Prussian blue, you have Berlin blue, you, are, you also have cyanide blue. Which blue are you talking about, Pablo? The deep cobalt blue of glass vases, bowls and ashtrays, my favorite color. Table cloths printed with indigo in classic patterns, a craft that is dying out. So, once in, a, in my life to be by the blue Adriatic, O oh heaven radiant azure. The blue butterfly flut fluttering ahead of us, the blue bird on the curtain that the artist Bloomberg used at the cabaret of Russian emigrants in 1920s Berlin, Kandinsky's blue rider school of painters, Franz Marx painting, the tower of blue horses, Picasso's blue period, the unforgettable blue of Eve's clean at the museum in Nice. Just as we feel inclined to pursue an attract attractive object that is fleeing from us. So, we like to look at blue, not because it pushes towards us, but because it draws us after it. That is the power of blue. So, blue is many things to many people. The blue are between daylight and dreaming, night blue, dove gray blue, the blue light from the fountain in the Grimm's fairy tale, which when the trust, a trusty and unjustly treated soldier's light lights his pipe in it, not only gives him uh, reparation, but a whole kingdom and the king's daughter to boot, that is the only way to go. General Franco's ghastly blue division in the Spanish Civil War. So, blue can be artistic, blue can be Picasso's blue, Kandinsky's blue, uh, Yves Klein's blue, but then you also have the Spanish, Spanish dictator General uh, Franco. His his army was also called the blue division, the blue flag of the European Union and the care packages of food that the Americans are dropping in Afghanistan are now blue and no longer yellow. So, people can tell them apart from the yellow cluster bombs that they are dropping at the same time. Uh, she is drawing attention to the implicit irony, the paradox in the situation, the same army uh, claiming to restore democracy in Afghanistan which is dropping yellow bombs on, on its people, uh, is at the same time uh, dropping care packages also. So, how hypocritical, uh, that is what uh, Krista Wolf is telling us in, uh, while you know dropping care packages. So, in order to distinguish between bombs and care packages, the color of the packages is also blue, which is quite uh, hilarious. On the other hand, you have the blue flower Pablo, the symbol of German Romanticism, a creation of Count Friedrich von Hardenberg, known as Novellus. Novellus is his uh, pseudonym uh, of Count uh, Hardenberg, the protagonist of whose novel, Heinrich von Oftingen, sees it in a dream, a tall pale blue flower that is stood by the spring and touched him with its wide shining petals. He saw nothing but the flower and contemplated it for a long time with inexpressible tenderness. He pursues this image of longing, seeing in it a bulwark against the uniformity and habitualness of life, a magic charm against the monoton, monoton, monotony of the earthly. But who was it shouted with joy when blue was born? What were you thinking Pablo? We do not know, but I think it was the extraterrestrials who shouted with joy at the birth of the earth, the blue planet. So, this is you know blue is a color of joy and earth is the only place to be with all its weaknesses, with all its flaws. So, a very good example of a short story which does not follow any of the features, which any of its characteristics, but it still makes you know for a good read and also uh, uh, an eminently good example of intertextuality, where so many allusions are made just by playing on the word blue. So, thank you very much.